to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. John Fischetti is the Head of School of Education here at the University of Newcastle. Good morning, John. Welcome. Good morning, Meryl. You have in your hand, I shall describe this for our listeners, it is a rather cute little piece of it's a stick, basically, covered in alfoil with a gorgeous little pink heart at the top and some green streamers. What do you call this apparatus, John? This is my magic wand. Okay. And a what year do you... two student gave it to me back when she came to one of my presentations and I talked about the magic wands for education. Tell me about this little magic wand. It's obviously a, a, an analogous or a metaphor today for what education can do for children and especially in light of what's going on, believe it or not, in our prisons at the moment. Yeah, when I heard about the riot overnight and the pending national riots that might occur, there's always the question that comes to your mind, what could we do to prevent this? How could we have lives that have gone lost? And there's three or four things that education can do, and that actually will also save us money. Just in relation to the riots, of course, this is uh, in response to a smoking ban. And I guess uh, you, there are two arguments for this. People might say, well, people are incarcerated and they shouldn't have privileges like smoking. On the other side, anyone who is a smoker will know how hard it is. And in fact, perhaps being in prison, it's the, it's the one thing that people have and yeah. it's causing a riotous situation. How does that link to education? Well, if we come back to it's a, it's a health issue as well, but... Mm. If every child in Australia had high quality early childhood education, that's preschool through to kindergarten, we would have almost none of the issues later on that we have, that the countries and the, and the suburbs that have gone to universal high quality pre-K, and that involves highly trained teachers, not just nannies or not just carers, the issues of those children in nutrition as well as in education and in parent involvement, as well as all the other factors of child development, are almost taken care of so they can start school on an even playing field. So you, you mentioned to me earlier, John, that the statistics or the ratio is, uh, is it five to one? Five or six to one. The investment in early childhood would save us five or six times the money of incarceration versus early childhood education. So it's actually an investment in a savings from investing in early childhood. We could save the need for the number of prisons and the number of uh, p police and the number of guards because we'd have a society where people were happier. Yes, okay. And I guess it is one of those things where sometimes you do hear of stories of, of people that have done atrocious things and in your mind you think, where have they gone wrong? You know, I mean, of course, there's out and out evil. And, and I know that you can't dispense yeah. that. You, you just have to say, well, that's what that is. But you do wonder that the majority of people that find themselves in prison, is it something to do with not how they were brought up or weren't their parents good enough, but what went wrong for them? Where did their life meet a point? that said, you know, you're going to go on a, a, a bad track. In fact, there was a study um, in America called we were, we were All Criminals, and I think it's still ongoing. And it basically did just that. It looked at people who had done something wrong mm -hmm. and how they'd narrowly avoided being sentenced and how their lives had turned out quite successfully as opposed to very similar people who had been sentenced and once you have a criminal record, the downward spiral. Yes. So that's a, a similar yep. kind of comparison. So the second phase in your life that's crucial is between year three and year four if you're not on the reading level of year three and year four. If you're already behind in reading, you're almost on a crash course with disaster, particularly today in the innovation age. So early childhood education and then reading by year four. What happens in the early primary years is we learn to read. Yes. And then from year four, we read to learn. So if you think about, we read children's books early. And then at about year four, we're reading science and history. We're reading in other disciplines. And if you don't have the fundamental skills and literacy, you're already behind. So we know that great literacy early is one of those next phases in life that can turn it around and help people have a great life. What do you say to parents and grandparents listening to us talking about this today, John, that say, look, oh, you know, I just, I don't have the time to read a book every night to my child. What, what are some of the cheat sheets, if you like, to helping your child with literacy and helping them become a better reader? They don't have to be an outstanding reader, but even a better reader, that people can actually apply driving in the car. Where, what are they? Well, the first is having books in your house. Okay. It's amazing now, and this is unfortunately a predicament, particularly with low-income families. They have the iPad and they have the television, but there was a study done in the U.S. just a few years ago that if you had 25 books 
in your home by year five, your child would be a high school graduate. Okay. So you need books and you need to be reading. It's one, again, those magic wands. So the first is you have to have books, okay. age-appropriate books and be reading. And there's something about the moment that you spend with the child, sitting on them sitting on your lap, in the bathtub with the little plastic books that float in the bathtub, and in the car reading a book rather than watching a film or playing a game that creates the fluidity of the literacy that transcends then and creates your, your mind that has capability beyond what it does if you've just been staring at a screen. Mm, it's uh, it's such a critical thing. I think uh, perhaps we can continue on with this conversation the next time we meet because it's not it doesn't just stop there, does it? At reading, no. there, there are other things and that the, we need to do. And the good news, Meryl, is we don't need the magic wand. We already know these things. So uh, my magic wand actually isn't needed redundant. because we actually know what we could do, three or four things that could help us prevent the problems later. So first thing is reading. We shall continue this conversation, okay. John Fischetti. Thank you so much. And in Thanks, the meantime... Girl. Read the signs to your children as you're driving along. Get them to have a go at reading the signs as you're driving along. I always found that 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 worked a treat.